guys, how's it going? Tez back again with another episode of the World Cup Squad Series here on my channel and of course on the Random FIFA Videos community channel as well. And we're into the end of Group A now. We've got Brazil today as you can see by the uh, the title, the team on your screen and the thumbnail etc. Now if uh, you're new to the series, basically what we do is we go through each of the uh, the teams drawn in the groups for the World Cup. We're going to go through quickly a squad of uh, 11 of those national players and then we'll go through their World Cup history. We have of course covered uh, previously already Cameroon and Mexico and Croatia, which are the other three teams in Brazil's group. Of course, Brazil hosting the tournament next summer in Rio 2014. And uh, basically, we're just going to quickly run through the team. Of course, we've got Diego Alves in goal. Defensive line of Marcelo, David Luiz, Thiago Silva and Dani Alves. Very, very good. Very strong, very fast, very technical, very good on the ball, very good in the tackle. Fantastic defensive line. Two holding midfielders of Ramirez and Fernandinho, actually. I couldn't afford an informed Fernandinho. I do apologise. But I went for Fernandinho to, uh, to have that extra Premier League link with uh, with Ramirez. Rambo, such a good player. So much pace, so much uh, attacking threat as well as being solid in the tackle. And Fernandinho is actually a very, very good all-round holding midfielder as well. Uh, obviously, even though he may not be called up to the national squad for the World Cup itself, you can't have a Brazilian team without Ronaldinho in it. So I I had to throw him in there at Cam. We've got William wide on the left, Lucas Melra out wide on the right. I uh, chose him over Hulk. I find him to be more uh, more reliable and more consistent as a winger out on the right hand side. And then of course up top we had to have Neymar. Uh, it cost me 274,000 coins. It's the most expensive player I've actually bought so far this year. Probably will be the player that I actually end up losing the most of when it comes to selling him on because of course uh, I bought him pre-Christmas. I'm recording and uh, making this post-Christmas so there'll be more of him on the market and he's Price will probably have dropped lows. But anyway, let's get cracking into their World Cup history. And to be fair, where do we start with Brazil? They're the most successful nation in World Cup history. Never ever failed to qualify for a tournament. The one next summer will be their 20th. Every single tournament they've qualified since 1930. And of those previous 19, they've won five. The most number of times uh, a single nation has won the World Cup. Absolutely mental. Uh, they won in 1958, 1962, 1970. So that's three of four in uh, between 58 and 70. 1994 and then of course again in 2002. But they've actually finished runners-up twice as well in 1950 when it was on home soil in Brazil. And then of course in France 1998 as well when they lost to the hosts at uh, in Paris at the Stade de France was it I think. And uh, they actually also came third in 38 and 78 and fourth in 1970 so they've always, always been there or thereabouts when it comes to uh, winning the World Cup trophy, which is absolutely mental. To be that dominant throughout the entire history of the sport is no mean feat by any by any means. And uh, they actually currently sit 10th in the FIFA rankings as I'm recording this, uh, just just after Christmas. It's the 27th of December 2013. But of course, as you might expect, they have been number one in uh, in the FIFA rankings. Actually, on seven separate occasions, the uh, the ranking system was only introduced in 1992, and uh, since then, in the past 20 one slash will be 22 years uh, they've been ranked number one in the world seven different times now of course while England's quote unquote golden generation is currently coming to an end Brazil's golden era as, uh, as it's referred to was actually a lot earlier than that it was from 1958 to 1970 of course they were the Pele years and uh, the Brazil that Brazil that particular Brazilian team from uh, from not 58 to 70 included, uh, of course, Pele, Zito and Garincha. It's widely regarded as one of the best national teams of all time. Although, of course, uh, Vicente Del Bosque and the Spanish side of uh, the one Euro 2008 World Cup in South Africa 2010 and Euro 2012, I'm pretty sure they'd have something to say about that. But it would have been so good, wouldn't it, to have seen them those two sides be able to play each other absolutely spectacular unfortunately there's uh, 50 years between them so uh, it isn't going to be feasible but what a game that would be but of course having such a wonderful scoring record in in his domestic career at Santos Pele is their national all-time leading goal scorer with 77 goals it's mental of course he scored hundreds upon hundreds for Santos in uh, in the Brazilian domestic league and he's got 77 for the national side now although it's actually a more recent Brazilian legend that uh, that has the most caps for his country you actually saw him at uh, at the the group draw itself in uh, it was was it held in Rio it was held in Brazil wasn't it in Rio uh, a few weeks ago it's actually Cafu who was uh, helping do the draw there and he's actually the uh, the highest caps holder for his country appearing 142 times in that famous the infamous yellow and blue kit 
Now, when it comes to uh, actually predicting how Brazil are going to do next summer in 2014 in Rio, uh, it's kind of hard not to look past them, or hard to look past them, rather. I kind of phrased that wrong. It's hard to look past them for a win on home soil, especially considering how dominant they were in the uh, Confederations Cup last summer, again, on home soil in Brazil. And, of course, although I guess you could say that it was a tired Spain side that, that lost to them in the final, but they've been completely rampant all the way through the uh, the entire tournament the Brazilian side of course with Neymar kind of coming to the fore he's uh, he's constantly been questioned as whether he can actually do it consistently at international level and now of course at a, a higher level of domestic football but he's proving at Barcelona that he's still just as good as he was when he was at Santos and of course in that Confederate Faces Cup he really came of age in that tournament scoring a couple of absolute bangers one of which was actually voted goal of the year so of course it is extremely hard to look past them when it comes to winning the tournament of course regardless of overall winning the tournament you would expect them to to finish top of group a with mexico cameroon and croatia kind of battling out the uh, the remaining three places but say uh, it's going to be between them say germany argentina and if spain can hold some form together I think it's going to be between those four for the World Cup title, but of course you would expect Brazil to be getting to the semi-finals at the very least, and there will be so much pressure from the the, uh, the locals, etc., when uh, when they're performing on home soil. But that's going to bring this particular episode to a close, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind. If you do enjoy the series, then feel free to drop me a comment as well, letting me know if you're watching this on random FIFA videos. Then of course do feel free to come and check my channel out. There will be a link in the description. Um, to the channel name is Chesnoid Gaming and of course if you're watching this on my channel thank you again for your continued support of this series we do it weekly every Sunday and uh, yeah that's going to wrap this one up guys the uh, the footage has run out I'm going to have a, just a Brazilian flag I guess on the screen right now so uh, thank you very much for watching guys and next week we will head into Group B